And welcome back to Shanakur Arena at the University of St. Thomas, where we'll wrap up day one of the second annual Thanksgiving tip-off tournament. The nightcap, big matchup. The Academy of Holy Angels, semifinalists in the Class 3A state championship a year ago against Dowling Catholic, a school from West Des Moines, a school that has a lot of recruits pining to pay attention to this game. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Beaton, joined by LaToya Turk. And LaToya, needless to say, we know a little more about one of these teams than the other. Right. And that is Holy Angels. Right. They are a school that brought back just about everybody. Megan Thompson was their only loss last year to graduation. Uh, but you've got Destiny Oberg, Kaylee Vanderwerf, and Riley Tal Huber, and they're the number two team in the preseason rankings in 3A. Right. And I think there's a, every reason to believe they'll be in contention for a 3A state tournament title this year. Right, we're just gonna see who's gonna take over that leadership role at the point guard position and we'll see where it goes from there. Alex Walker and Frankie Vassalero will be the two uh, fighting for that starting slot at point guard. Alex Walker will get the start tonight, but Frankie Vassalero came along uh, pretty well last year. And when you've got a post tandem like Oberg and Vanderwerf, Right. You can do a lot of damage down low. Absolutely, absolutely. Looking forward to seeing those two again this year. Now, Dowling Catholic, we don't know a whole lot about them. I had to pull this up on my phone to figure out who's some players to watch, but you've got Maya Cataldo, Caitlin Moses, Anna Wanek. Now, we can't really set the scene for you in a normal circumstance, but I know you were excited to see this team, and you know, for this Iowa group, they're going to have to get used to playing halves. They play quarters down. Okay south of our border here. Okay. Well, if they're as good as they say they are in the paper, uh, I think they'll make the adjustment. We'll see if they're ready to play 36 minutes of hoops. We'll have the starting lineups in a minute. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. All right, Mike and LaToya here. A lot of folks wanted to see this Dowling Catholic team. Uh, maybe not the most packed uh, girls game we have seen. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of Iowa fans will be happy to see us. And with Holy Angels, new uniforms this year. And I've noticed the pants or their trunks of their shorts have uh, that star design on them. Yes. And most schools update their uniforms every two years. So it was Holy Angels, and it was their Holy Angels' turn to get some new uh, uniforms. But, you know, you've got a challenge here for Holy Angels. You've got to play at 9 o'clock. Usually later right. than most games that you're used to doing. For and for Dowling Catholic, so we're going to find out if they can hang an with, for an extra four minutes because, as you know, Minnesota, the only school the in the start, state to have 18-minute halves. Right. Or the only state in the country. Now, that's what I meant to say. I knew. I knew what you, you meant knew, to say. You knew, but I, some viewer out there may not <laughs> think I'm crazy and delusional, which I probably am for covering three tip-off games at two venues. It helps Easy that they're man. only three miles apart. And a new addition to the Holy Angels program, number two, Alex Walker, taking over the point guard position tonight. And I spoke with Joe Berg. Uh, the Holy Angels team, uh, not all here. Well, Dan Woods, he's still making his way over from football. The football team played in the 4A championship tonight. So Holy Angels, a bit shorthanded, you know, because their head coach isn't here. Fortunately, this will be the only night where such an overlap occurs. And on top of that, the girls' volleyball team also got to state in Class 2A, reaching the semifinals. So Joe Berg, one of the assistants for the girls' basketball team, also coaches the volleyball team. So for the entire Holy Angels staff, uh, they've been running wow. <laughs> running all over the place. Wow. You know what? I, that sounds like a great program. Maybe, they're, maybe their athletic teams are a little too good. Maybe they should, one of them should just uh, chill out for a little while. <laughs> no. no, it's good to see that kind of talent across all the sports. Holy Angels strong football program, the girls basketball program, they won a state title ending a 41 year drought a couple years ago. Uh, Laura Bakewell Katalinich was the front runner there. She's now at Penn. Now it's Destiny Ober, Kaylee right. Vanderwerf. Yeah. Right. And you got to play, well you got to coach against Holy Angels last year. Como and Holy Angels will meet again this year. 
with Destiny Oberg, if she gets set up down low, uh, it's really tough to move her. Right, right. She, she boxes out well. She's disciplined underneath the basket. She has a great shot. Good counter on her uh, post-up moves. And she has a great supporting cast. The starters quickly for you for Dowling. It's Caitlin Clark, number 11. Caitlin Moses, number 15. Maya Cataldo, number 21. Anna Wanek, number 23. And JC Cothy, number 35. Holy Angels starting Alex Walker, number 2. Megan Meyer, 21. Kaylee Vanderwerf, 22. Destiny Oberg, 23. And Riley Talheber, number 30. And Dowling controls the tip. And for Holy Angels, again, the only change to their starting lineup is the point guard slot. Megan Thompson graduated. And uh, Kaylee Vanderwerf comes up with the block. Right she away. started her varsity career at Burnsville before transferring to Holy Angels in ninth grade. High low, the high lob to Oberg, and you know what she's going to do. Absolutely. You have to have that help side defense. And you know, Dan Woods will join later. I don't know if you've had a chance to connect with him, but he is not afraid to engage in conversation. I covered the Como game last year, as you know, and he and I were talking about his history. He's been at Holy Angels for a long time, and he can still regale you with tales of having to go against Lindsey Whalen when Holy Angels and Hutchinson were conference rivals. And back then, you had Lindsey Whalen, who, no, well, was a bit unheralded. Nobody at the time expected her to become uh, a four-time WNBA champion. Correct. And Susan King from Holy Angels, who finished as one of the state's 3,000-point scores, still holds the scoring record at Holy Angels. I don't know if I'm more impressed with the games today that I've seen or the knowledge that you have, Mike. <laughs> Well, you get some coaches who love to talk. Dan Woods is one of them, and and you know, he's been on hand to see Larry Fitzgerald, Susan King, Laurel Bagwell, Katalinich. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> we've got Anna Wanix at the line shooting too. I suppose I do have a game to talk about. And she t makes the first of the two. And, and the, second. the second one. Good for him. And we're tied up at two early. And Allen puts on a press. And it forces the turnover. And Awanek, we should point out, who shot those free throws, will be coming back here next year at Minnesota State Mankato on a basketball scholarship. She will graduate with more than 210 service hours. And Impressive. also as a member of National Honor Society. Impressive. Student athlete. High low. Oh, nice recovery by Holy, uh, Dowling. And Dowling's not a big team height wise. They're definitely using their pick and roll. They're slipping to the basket well. And admittedly, I have do not know what their nickname is. I'm going to have to pick up on that. There's Walker for three. Off the mark. Dowling Catholic Mervs. Mervs. That's going to take uh, some That's getting used one. to. It helps that we have some Dowling Catholic junior varsity players here, the Mervs. I'm sure there's some significance to it. Dowling Catholic hustling for the second chance, and they hang on to it. There's Wanick, and she draws another foul. This will be a side out for the Mervs. At least Holy Angels, theirs is easy. <laughs> Not too many schools around here with stars in their name. Did I touch a nerve there, Abe? Foul on Megan Meyer. Abe is our camera guy, and I'll explain this. Two years ago, well, a couple, the last couple of seasons, actually. Oh, nice back door. Good hand, Stars. And Megan Meyer has got it. Will she take it all the way? No. Rebound, no putback for Tal Huber. Vanderwerf tries to sneak in there. Tal Huber hangs on to it. Good hustle underneath the basket for the Stars. Walker curls and Finishes. Holy Angels finally puts it down. 
And that's going to warrant a timeout from Dowling's Kristen Meyer. Uh, Alex Walker with their first points as a member of Holy Angels. So to finish up, Abe is our camera guy, but he's also a team photographer for Bloomington Kennedy. The last couple of years, Kennedy and Holy Angels met in the section final. And two years ago, Kennedy lost by three points. Holy Angels goes on to win, and I spoke with LaShayla Wright Ponder later on, and she said that still bothers her. So Abe is kind of rooting for Dowling here because he's still is salty about Holy Angels ending Kennedy's hopes of reaching a state tournament. Mike, do you know where Alex Walker comes from? I did not get an opportunity yet because, well, with, well, with these kinds of tournaments and, you know, half the coaching staff not here, you know, you're pretty much it's quick prep, but I will be covering some Holy Angels games later this year and I, I'll get back to you. I, I know this much, if the preseason rankings are an indication as Megan Meyer is called for carrying. Illegal dribble. Uh, carrying, illegal dribble. I didn't or, see the I'll hands, put it sorry. this way. If this, if there was a student section here, they would chant, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember but that. But I was going to say, with if the preseason rankings are any indication, I may have to check out that Holy Angels De La Salle series. As we have another scramble for the ball, it's recovered by Dowling Catholic. Lining up the three, missing it is Caitlin Clark. Rebound, Kothi. And... It'll go back out to Clark for a reset from the corner. And Vanderwerf and Oberg were there. Twin Towers. They are the Twin Towers at Holy Angels. Way and to find her. Megan Meyer scores in transition. Holy Angels with a 6-2 lead. Last year, the Stars won their first eight games before dropping their first one. And that one was a bit of a surprise. It came in the holiday tournament at Hill Murray. They will be participating in it this year, along with Orno and... Good recovery. And Vanderwerf again. Using those long She is arms. all over. She runs the floor very the well, too. She's up top on the press, on the defensive press. Moves very well for her height. Aren't you glad you don't have to scout against them anymore? <laughs> The high-low, well, Can't not a great it. idea. Kothi and Oberg about equal in height. Might have worked if Oberg was as tall as Sylvia Fowles, but alas, no 6'6 post players. Going to the line is Caitlin Clark for Dowling Catholic. Caitlin Clark, first team all-conference last year, played on the U16 national team for Team USA this past year. Won a gold medal in Argentina. And was also a first team All-State recipient in soccer as a freshman. That's pretty impressive. But she blanks from the free throw line. So they'll be here for a couple of games. And it's always cool to see some out-of-state teams come up here. You, of course, know how much talent there is in boys and girls hoops in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. All of the D1 athletes the state sends out. Oberg. Can't let her get that deep. But she can't finish. Meyer no good. And Oberg, third time's the charm. You cannot let Oberg penetrate down low, as you were saying, because bad things will happen if you're trying to stop her. Three on the way, oh. bullseye, and a chance at four for Caitlin Clark. Let's see if she can make good on this free throw. Dowling Catholic reached the state tournament last year in their division, also won the conference in the Iowa division of the Central Iowa Metro League. 19 and five record for this Mervs program a year ago, and they're gonna make some subs. One of them, number 55, we're going to call her Nai Tong. Nai is shorthand. Uh, and Caitlin Clark does make good on that four-point play. That happened uh, earlier today 
with Sarah Scalia. She had a four-point play in Stillwater's one over New Prague. And Tong gets the steal for Dowling Catholic. And Frankie Vassalero is subbing in for the Stars. And on the other end, missing the three is Cataldo. Rebound, number 34. That is Rachel Kowicki. Vassalero for three, off the heel. Vassalero. Tries to stop and is able to, and then coming up with the block is number 10, Emma Henry, one of the two twin, one of the two Henry sisters. A lot of coast to coast action here. Who scored that one for Holy Angels? I think it was number 10. That was Emma Henry and Caitlin Clark on the other end. And I'm glad that ball went out of bounds because I had to catch my breath for a bit with all the substitutions, having to write down names. But it's 10 to eight. And now we're seeing Dowling pick things up a bit. Caitlin Clark starting to find a rhythm. Yes. And as we wait, I think we have a scoring error we've got to fix. That's uh, Taryn Buford, we should point out, who's over there speaking with one of the Holy Angels coaches. Taryn is the husband of Dijernay Buford. You may remember her as Dijernay Prielo, who played volleyball and basketball here at St. Thomas in the old Shanaker configuration. And every time her husband comes out to officiate a game, she's there. Well, they are parents of two now. Dijernay is standout at St. Paul Central. She graduated the same year as Ashley Ellis Milan. Okay who is uh, an assistant coach at Concordia University. Right. A bench technical was called on Holy Angels for a uniform discrepancy. Oh. I'm guessing what happened is one of the numbers did not match up the with the book. So Maya, Mia Cataldo is shooting the free throws. It's a bench technical, so nobody will be assessed with it. And that can happen when you don't have your regular crew on the bench. And like you said, we had some coaches that were out at other state tournament events. So, And it's your first game of the year. Yes. And here's the discrepancy. 31, Isabel Henry. She was listed as 32 in the program. So, you know, harmless mistake, but they have to call a technical in that circumstance. But... Uh, but by far one of the uh, one of the least egregious technicals <laughs> you can get in the sport. Right. Well, I was on hand for Como de La Salle two years ago. You were there for this. Four technicals in the first half. Yes. I have never seen a game like that before or since. Well, make sure you come to the matchup this year. Well, they'd have to play each other in sections if that were to happen. Como and de La Salle, I don't think, are scheduled to face each other this year in the regular season. I haven't taken, I haven't looked at the schedule. I spoke with Alexis Gray Lawson and she's like, no, she, they were trying, but if they meet in sections, I'll put it this way, Chris Bierman, the Maranatha head coach, I spoke with him earlier today. He said, if Como and De La Salle play each other in the sections, he's going to that game. <laughs> and if that happens, I'm going. I think we'll all be there. Oberg with the rebound. 10.58 left in the first half. Vassalero can't handle the pass, and it's intercepted by Caitlin Clark. Now she's going to have to sit down and play some defense. Can't. And she over. fouls That's Clark and one. Caitlin Clark making her official introduction. Or to borrow a line from the song Sympathy for the Devil, please allow me to introduce myself. That's what Caitlin Clark is saying. And it, before this is through, Caitlin Clark may depart this first game with pleased to meet you, hope you guess my name. <laughs> we may all know her name by the end of this. She has nine of Dowling Catholic's 12 points, and the Mervs take the lead 
That's, that's showing a, extreme confidence in your post player. They lob that into there to her, and there were four defenders around her. And when you're in a pinch, there's nothing like the steady hand of Destiny Over, a traveling violation on Dowling Catholic. Frankie Vassalero, the daughter of Frank and Amelia, Frank Vassalero, Amelia Santanello from WCCO, and the younger sister of Sam Vassalero, who plays for the boys' basketball team at St. Thomas Academy. Both of them got to state last year. Oberg missing, gets, gets her own rebound. rebound. And that's why you can put a lot of faith in her. Well, they do give it to Dowling Catholic, but still, Destiny Oberg knows exactly what to do when she's trapped down low, when she mm -hmm. has the advantage. I think she's used to being double teamed and trapped. Well, made a name for herself as a freshman on that state championship team and has slowly built her way up. Elbow J off the mark from number one. And that's Ella McVeigh for Dowling Catholic. 9.41 left in the first half. 12-12 our score. Quite a game. And it looks like uh, Colin Moore and his daughter are sticking around for this one. Vassalero having a tough time out there. J.C. Cothey with the interception. She's got to transition quicker than that. We all make mistakes. And Cothey can't finish the high-low play. Gets her own rebound. Draws the foul on Vanderwerf. We sh and to finish up that point of Vassalero, she is a freshman, so oh, still okay. has a lot of growing to do. Okay. So we're going to have another timeout here. Kothi will shoot three throws. Kothi, a volleyball standout as well. She's reached the state tournament twice. In that sport. And you, know, you can't see it from here, but the junior varsity players are swerving along to some 60s pop music, and Latoya's doing the same, and Abe can't help himself either. If you like this kind of music, you should do a Holy Angels game or two with me because uh, they like to play some 60s tunes. <laughs> well, at that Coma Park game, I think they dropped in a Summer in the City from the Love and Spoonful. Okay. Would, uh, I'm usually talking to the team, so I never really pay attention <laughs> to what music's playing. Well, play, I was play. by myself in that game, so I had to kill time, and this is where I come up with all this useless trivia that makes you wonder, what am I still doing here? <laughs> so J.C. Cothy, the volleyball and basketball standout, knocks down one of two. Dowling just five of nine from the free throw line. And now Dowling's putting on a full court press, giving the Stars a little trouble here. Kawicki in trouble and loses it. Caitlin Clark skips Finds it over. Shooter. Wanick for three. Yes. The Dowling lead is now four, and it could go even higher. The full court press. Holy Angels in trouble, and that's a backcourt violation. What happened, Alex Walker was behind the timeline when Kowicki tried the shovel pass, and that is what constituted the backcourt violation. You can pass behind you as long as your body is not completely across, but you can't go back unless your teammate has crossed the line. Wanek from the corner. No good. Dead ball rebound to the Stars. Eight forty to go in the first half. More full court press. Holy Angels unable to break it. Can't hold on to it. And with this being opening day, Joe Berg talked to me briefly and said, Holy Angels, they've only practiced for seven days. Okay. And for every team that takes part in these Thanksgiving tournaments, you know, that's what they run into. You don't mm -hmm. practice for very long before that first game. 
and you take the Thanksgiving holiday off. So you can expect some opening day jitters right. that will be cleaned up come state tournament time. And Holy Angels, certainly it can. Holy Angels no having a hard time there. stopping Caitlin Clark. Clark up to 12. She's matching the score of Holy Angels right now. And the Mervs are up by seven. And it could go even higher. Another steal. Clark all alone. Goodbye. Timeout, Holy Angels. The Mervs on a huge run. They're up by nine. Yeah, that full court press really helped them out there. Put, gave them a couple back-to-back -back steals. And if you're in that situation, having to deal with a full court press, how would you get Como to adapt to it when you were coaching them last year? Well, you need to be able to read your defense so um, and have a ball handler who can, who can handle the ball and read the defense. And I think that's what the Stars are struggling with. They only have one ball handler out there right now, and she wants to bring the ball up against the press. And that's really difficult to have a lot of dribbling against the press. So pass the ball. Um, you have to have some, you know, whatever the press is that they're running, you, gotta, you have to have a counter for it. And I don't think they're getting set up. They're just trying to dribble the ball through that press. And in the case of Holy Angels, you've got a point guard who is not used to this system, and Alex Walker. She joined the team this year. Frankie Vassalero, a freshman. She hasn't had a lot of varsity time either. So there's going to be some trials and tribulations at that position for the Stars. And another turnover. They'll get it. They'll get it. I think they will. There's no doubt that they will, but right now they are looking out of sorts here. Yes. I can tell what they're thinking. They'll get there. Wanek missing the runner. And a dead ball rebound to the Stars. You know, and even though Megan Thompson wasn't the standout like Laura Bagwell Katalinich was, her presence, you see the impact her presence has just right. by not being here. She's in college now, but. Holy Angels just you have to settle flabbergasted. Down. Yes. Flabbergasted, bewildered, puzzled. Whatever synonym you use, that would fit the point conundrum at Holy Angels right now. But we still have a long way to go. 7.07 in the first half. Wanick inside to Clark. Step back. Off the heel. Rebound, Wanick. And that one is picked off. Now they got to exercise patience Meyer. and make good passes. Walker almost lost it. Three on the way. Off the mark. Either that or that was just a pass for over disguised as a shot. I'm thinking that's what it was. We'll take it. Well, that will pad Olberg's rebound and point totals on the other end. Dowling missing down low. And they have to we clean don't have up that pass. In the program. I'm going to have to get it at halftime. Oberg steps in, but misses the long-range deuce. And that's probably not the shot you're looking for if you're Holy Angels. No. And Holy Angels isn't running the floor very well at this time. JC, they might oh, go ahead. Be a little uh, out of breath at the beginning of the season. You know, we're not conditioned yet. And so coming down and, and having this run and gun. What is going on if you're a Holy Angels fan? And Megan Meyer rips the ball away. Ah. And no one came with her from Holy Angels. And then a foul. Holy Angels already in the penalty. A double whammy. No big bucks for the Stars there. You picked up. You, you got where. <laughs> I was wondering if you would catch on. Well, you get $5,000 in a spin. <laughs> <laughs> we have free throws coming for Dowling Catholic. And it, Holy Angels, they've got a lot of adjustments to make, and this is a strong team, so don't let this right. first half confuse you. They are going to be a strong contender in 3A, but... You know, and it's number 34 for Holy Angels, the freshman who's out there. Rachel Kowicki. 
She's a strong player. She's going to be a, a great contribution to the Holy Angels team. She can put the ball on the floor well. Caitlin Clark forced into a difficult shot by Vassalero. And now Holy Angels putting on the pressure. And another foul. More free throws coming. That's the issue. Ten fouls now for the Stars. One for Dowling Catholic. But you know, this is something they'll have to work on because De La Salle, they've got a point guard in Ayanna Gardner, who's back in her final year as a varsity player. Right. Hutchinson, you know they're hungry after Orno sent them home in Section 6 and right. that forever ongoing rivalry between those two. Cataldo splitting there. Going to have to use that left hand and get out of the corner. And another turnover. I think they have the mindset that if we throw it up, Destiny can get it. <laughs> that may be true, but you got to give her good passes. Right. Uh, Destiny is a strong post player, but you can't throw Aaron passes because she... <laughs> Not even the, Sylvia Faust is going to make them all in that situation. And more free throws coming for Caitlin Moses. And the foul count is 11 to 1. Right. You know, they stopped counting after 10, but I'm, I'm shocked in a sense. This is a team that got to the semifinals last year. They're having quite the rivalry with Winona. They've uh, those two met in back-to-back -back years in the state tournament. Caitlin Moses will play at Iowa State University on a softball scholarship next year. And that's a lane violation, so that will not count. It's always nice to see multi-sport athletes. A four-year letter winner in that sport. And Holy Angels, you've got a little bit of that as well. But you, Dowling Catholic, when I'm look, going over the notes that was that Kristen Meyer provided to us, you see volleyball, softball, soccer, a throng of multi-sport athletes. Nai Tong posts up on Destiny Ober. You don't see that often. More pressure, Vassalero, elbow J, cannot fall. Kawicki races in for the rebound. Vassalero recovers. Time for a reset. And now Destiny's calling for it. Vassalero can't handle the pass. Oh, someone get back. And another transition bucket. Caitlin Moses with her first field goal. Dowling up by 15 against the number two team in 3A in Minnesota. Walker losing it, almost lost it again. Vassalero for three. Oh, Holy Angels needed that. Frankie Vassalero. Cataldo skips it over to 31. We'll get her name in a moment. And firing the corner three was Cataldo. She can't hit. 31 is Grace Gaber for the Mervs. Uh, I look like some, some players took the offseason off. It feels that way, but you know, we still have another half and you know, we've seen we've seen a few share of comebacks here. Yes. Benel came back to beat Providence a couple games ago. Bloomington Kennedy came back from ten down to beat St. Paul Central. Remember, this is the first game of the year. Right. And again, this is a Holy Angels team that has had to deal with a lot of And they're going to go back to their moneymaker. And that's going to get them free throws. Destiny Oberg averaged a double-double last year. And she had a double-double against you guys a year ago. And Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> and there's Paige Beckers. Paige Beckers, uh, the Hopkins standout, who's been heavily, been heavily recruited, the latest in a long line of outstanding Hopkins athletes. Yeah, she's nursing an ankle injury right now. 
Well, and that's going to leave Hopkins, uh, I guess, shorthanded. Well, they have the Raina. Year. Raina Suggs will step in. Well, that's true. If you're Hopkins, I mean, you someone go goes down. down you row. just you just someone goes down. Two will take your place. Yeah, you just go down the row. <laughs> you can go down the row. Well, Andrea Gray is uh, part oh, of that yes. program this year. We'll see how she does. She hasn't played varsity ball in a long time. But she still has it. I watched her play a little bit in the um, preseason fall league games over at Hopkins, and she looks good. She's back from her concussion and she's handling the ball well and driving to the basket. She had the concussion and then you know, just things didn't work out at Minneapolis North. A little bit of politics there. I'm not going to get mm -hmm. into it that mm -hmm. much because I'm not them, but we'll see if uh, you know, she's a junior now and she hasn't played varsity ball in a year and a half. We'll see. You know, she's we'll varsity see she ready, though. I'm not saying she isn't, but... <laughs> When you've been go, when you've been away that long, that's going to be something that the folks are going to monitor here. But Brian Cosgriff, he knows what he's doing, and yeah. if there's anyone who can help you reacclimate after that long of an absence, it's Brian Cosgriff. There, there are a few players that I would put my money on, and she's one of them. Well, her mother will appreciate that. <laughs> Raina Suggs, and I'm sure there'll be some other Hopkins standout that I don't know of yet because they find no, yeah, they always find new ones. She'll be a great addition to their backcourt. Vasilero from the top of the key, bullseye. So, so we know she can shoot. Well, Vasilero giving Holy Angels a pair of much needed triples. Pulling up from 15, swish. Caitlin Clark, she's up to 16 now. I'm really impressed with this kid. Another three, and a foul. No, that was, uh, I thought that was a foul, and what happened is somebody's shoes squeaked. It sounded like a whistle. Dead ball rebound, though, for Dallin Catholic, and Kaylee Vanderwerf will take it, go in for Rachel Kowicki. Two twenty. I think as Holy Angels plays around with their, their lineup, They'll, they'll find what works for them. The, the right combination on the floor. Jump ball, Holy Angels with the arrow, and you know, we should point out, point guard, perhaps the most difficult position to replace after a loss to graduation. Well, heck, it's the most difficult position to replace, period. Yes. Oh. Vasilero stepped on the line, wasn't aware of it. No. Seattle, when Sue Bird decides to retire, you know, they're going to have to figure out who takes over. When Lindsey Whalen decides to call it quits, the Lynx are going to have to find someone. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy position to replace because the point guard is responsible for so much. Right. Caitlin Clark, feeling it. That was beautiful. Abe, pay attention. Abe is liking it. As he told us, an enemy of an enemy is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Angels, Eastview. Entry pass intercepted by Kothi. Uh, coming back for the strip is Isabel Henry. Here she comes, and she'll shoot two. Isabel and Emma, the two Henry twins on Holy Angels, got a little bit of time a year ago. And this is still a winnable game if you're the Stars. Yes. I think the obvious thing is you got to control the ball, but how do you make sure you don't succumb to that Dally Catholic pressure? They just need to slow it down, make better passes, use their ball fakes, go back to their fundamentals. They're a smaller team. They're young. They're at the point guard position. Henry sinks both and comes up with a steal. Now I have to be careful and watch out for that trap. Stay out of the corners. Especially when you're near the timeline. But Henry, can she give the Stars team a spark? Well, there you go. And no, I'm not a Holy Angels fan, but you know, that's the time when you want to go inside to Oberg is when she's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Which is going to be rare. 
swing the ball, good ball movement, get it to her. Pretty much any Holy Angels opponent is going to be concentrating on Oberg, no doubt. Like I said, you're probably glad you don't have to face her anymore. And you don't have to worry about coaching or scouting up a diagram anymore. You get to just watch your daughter, well, go up against the likes of Sarah Scalia and yes. Alexis Pratt. But Oberg makes both free throws. Kothi is blocked. We're seeing some glimpses out of Holy Angels, and if they can string a few more of these together, you know, maybe they can come back here in the second half. Remember a year ago in the season opener, they had trouble in the first half with Tatino Grace, and then blew up in the second half, winning by over 20. Caitlin Clark, deep three is too deep. But the high carom goes right back to her. Less than a minute to go in the first. Mike Beaton and Latoya Turk. who is known by everybody, I should point out. I think she has a fan club. And Anna Wanek, a fan of the basket, nails the three. The lead is now 13. Henry in trouble, use up the dribble, finds Emma Henry. And let's see if they try to go back in the middle. Oberg is gonna try to work her way in. No, she'll kick out, Vassalero for three. Looks off and it is. Emma Henry with the cleanup. Gets the Plinko bounce. And they're hanging around. They're staying in this game. And this is what you want to see. The score should be 38-27, unless I haven't been counting right, but this is what you want to see. And we have 12 seconds left, 25-38 with Dowling up. So we'll go with 38-25, or I guess you lead left to right. Tomato, tomato. Kothi. Up on Oberg, not a good idea. At least not underneath. I think we saw earlier when Tong posted up on Oberg, you want to go straight up. Right. <laughs> Oberg is too strong for that. Dowling had a foul to give, so no free throws here. Holy Angels will have 6.8 seconds to do something. And there's some discrepancy at the scores table. And I think... It, Give everyone a little breather here. It may be for the clock, could be the score. In any case, Vasilero going the length of the floor. Finds Ober, fires the three. No good, and Henry won't get a chance for a putback. So, Dowling. A strong pressure defense, kind of like what we saw out of Creighton in our last game, and they have a 13-point lead over Holy Angels, 38-25, going into halftime. Caitlin Clark, what an impressive first half. Absolutely, absolutely. And we didn't know what to expect, but she's definitely putting on a show out here. And as you said for Holy Angels, they've got to work on the passing. Anything else to come back in the second half? Just slow it down, get in sync. I think they're just working out some kinks and... Um, they're going to be all right this season. We'll take a break and come back for the second half. We'll see if Dowling can hang on and uh, steal a win away from a Minnesota team in the North Star State. You're watching the second annual Thanksgiving tip-off at St. Thomas. And we're back for the second half. Mike Pete and Latoya Turk will rejoin me shortly. Dowling Catholic up 38-27. The score was corrected, so it is officially a 38-27 score in favor of the Mervs. Unofficially from the first half, Caitlin Clark with 19 points, Anna Wanick with eight. Those are your notables for Holy Angels. Destiny Oberg with 11. Frankie Vassalero with six, knocking down a couple of trays. And Emma Henry with four. But the story of the first half, turnovers. Holy Angels went into a stretch where they couldn't hang on to the ball. The pressure defense of Dowling Catholic stumped them almost completely. They recovered and got a few plays off in the first half. But as Latoya Turk rejoins me, I saw you were chatting up with Grant McGinnis of North Star Hoops. I was uh, catching up with Frank Vassalero, who has seen my coverage in the past, and he said, well, as one of his uh, fellow uh, Holy Angels parents told him, it's the first game of the year. Right. Right. We all and, have a few cobwebs. And Frank and I were talking about just the difficulty in replacing 
the point guard position. Megan Thompson is here tonight to cheer on her teammates, and you know, you, you're replacing a four-year starter. Oh, yeah. That's not easy to do. No. But uh, that being said, I also found out that uh, Frank uh, gets a few of his old buddies to watch some of these games, probably at his place of work. But you know, the point guard position really can be made in the off season. So if they're struggling throughout the season, I, I don't think they'll struggle for long. I think they'll no. get, they'll get it together. But um, the the options that they have at the point guard position, they'll develop them. They're young, um, and it'll work itself out. Well, let's remember the coaching staff committed to other sports. Dan Woods with football, Joburg with volleyball. Only seven practices. All factors. And no one will use that as an excuse, but you can understand why they may have looked a little surprised in that first half. So what did you and Grant talk about? Basketball. <laughs> of course. We talked about some of the games and the matchups over at Hamlin today. Well, Grant, uh, he knows a thing or two about beat writing. He was once a writer for the Winnipeg Jets. Well, covered the Jets, I should say. Didn't, wasn't an employee. And number 43 for the Stars is Emma Mastry, another returning player. Holy Angels, as we said, 10 returning athletes altogether. So this is a team that will figure it out. They'll get it together and learn each other. Yeah, got they to may clean not up start off passes. with that. They may not start with that eight-game winning streak like they did a year ago, the first time in school history that happened. But uh, do not underestimate this Holy right. Angels program. And with Orno, well, we'll see what happens there. With Orno getting crushed today by Como Park, you know, they've got a lot of rebuilding to do. Right. That three title race is wide open again, and it seems to be that way every year. Walker for three. Clanks it. Rebound Clark. Clark, nice skip to Wanick. Transition defense, fundamental. They're, that's the second time they've left that back door open on transition. They're a little more patient in that breaking that press. Holy Angels shows off their twin towers. And Vanderwerf will go to the line. That was her first field goal, Vanderwerf, as we noted. A transfer from Burnsville, played varsity there as an eighth grader, and moved her way up. And, and she's, she's been a great addition to this Holy Angels roster. Yeah, she's come along, and you know, Joe Berg and the crew happy to have her. And as we said, that gives you that Twin Towers. And mm -hmm. how many times has that helped high school teams? St. Paul Central, their Twin Towers. Uh, Georgie Jones, Megan Howard. Maybe they weren't as tall as those two, but you know, they did big things in that St. Paul Central super team. And she can also and play defense on, on you know, Look out. larger guards and out on the wing. Dead ball rebound to the Stars. Uh, Orno had that yeah. a couple years ago when they got to the semifinals in 2015. Vanderwerf missing the long two. Rebound Kothi. Oh. Another backdoor. Kothi, the beneficiary. It comes with talking on defense. Everyone getting back or not getting back for that matter. Entry pass to Oberg in a precarious position, just threw it up. She's had a rough go of it tonight. Contact and a traveling violation. From your perspective, was that a foul? It was a foul before the travel. I think so. I think there was a push there. I saw a little bit of contact. They let it go. Yeah. You know, some officials might call it. Others might let that slide. Right. 
I guess it's one of those 50-50 calls depending on who your crew is. But Holy Angels catches a break. We'll see if they can make the most of it. No, they will not. Steal by Wanick. Here she comes. Goodbye. Tal Huber in the corner. Goes baseline. And Megan Meyer wasn't ready. They have to make them pay for doubling Destiny. If there's two people on her, that means that someone is open. And they have to be able to attack that and find that open player. Well, as much as Abe is enjoying this, I have to tease him. I'm a little worried here. Because if this result holds, if Dowling's able to win this, uh, girls teams make conspire to boycott me when they play out-of-state programs, and I'll explain why. Last year, I covered the Cobalt Park Madison East game. The Pergolders won that one. A month later, I was at the MLK St. Catherine event, covered the Somerset Glencoe Silver Lake game. Somerset from Wisconsin. They win that game. Oh, sh don't tell them that it's you. It could be, because this is the third <laughs> game where I've covered an out-of-state school against a Minnesota team, and these out-of-state schools are winning. But that just shows you how talented Caitlin Clark and this Dowling Catholic team is. But I'm, I'm worried that if this keeps up, any time an out-of-state school comes here to Minnesota, they're going to ban me from covering it. <laughs> I figured this out. It, maybe it is me. No, it, it's always fun, though. I mean, you got the chance with Madison East, and for that's going to be a foul. That was a collision. On, well, they're going to call it on Dowling? It looks that way. Yes, on Kothi. But in all seriousness, you know, you got a chance to experience it last year. How exciting is it when you have an out-of-state program make the trip you know, to when, face you. When, you. when you have a team that will travel um, to come and play your team, uh, it's, it's a good feeling. Um, one, it's a level of respect because they, they've taken time and resources to travel to come and play your team. So you want to make sure that you give them good competition. And they're usually headliners because they're teams that we haven't seen. So it forces your team to play. It forces your coaches to coach. It's usually there's not a lot of scouting material. Bolbrick with another cleanup. Depending on how she does this year, I, I think I've got a nickname for her. Mrs. Clean. <laughs> Foul on Holy Angels. No. We're going the other way. Foul on Dowling. Caitlin Clark hit with the offensive foul. So Holy Angels has gotten a, they've gotten a few breaks here these last few possessions. Let's see if they can capitalize. 31-44 right now. There is still plenty of time. And again, they struggled against Satino Grace in the first half of their game last year. Rebounded and won in a runaway. So this is a team. Well, you can't turn it over to Caitlin Clark and give her an open lane because that's what she's going to do. The basketball version of the pick six, folks. Oberg for three. I still don't think that's the shot you wanted to take. No. And we know about the stretch four. A lot of post players have worked on long distance shots, but you got to make it work. Caitlin Clark Talk about feeling long it. Distance. Uh, we've seen players, girls and boys, just ignore the three point line. <laughs> Jalen Suggs comes to mind. Michaela Vanette. <laughs> if it's a three, she'll shoot it. Yes. <laughs> and if they gave po additional points for range, she'd be taking four-point shots and oh. five-point shots as well. Don't give her any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple on that Como team. Autumn Tucker. Well, and that's one way to make up because Como Park, as athletic as they are, they don't have any big post players. Huh? like Oberg and Vandenberg here for Holy Angels. So they have got, some post players, but not do? as dominant as um, Oberg. Well, what I mean in terms of height, you know, right. last year, Elena Jones was their tallest player at 5'11". 
Well, they have Zarina Simitelli, who's right at uh, six feet. And then with um, the addition of uh, Danica Patterson, she stands about 5'11", so not, not much more height, but... And then Autumn Tucker is five feet with the shoes on, I <laughs> right. bet. Right, and those would be heels. <laughs> Kaylin Clark losing the ball for the Mervs. Let's see if the Stars can get another run going. They made a line change sub, and that's going to be a travel. <laughs> well, Holberg flipped the behind the back. With three players on her. And with Vanderwerf on the bench, I imagine defensive concentration will focus on Oberg. Mm -hmm. And so the other players have got to step up and rotate. Clark, top of the key, missed the three. Rebound Oberg. Holy Angels doesn't have the numbers for a transition, so Henry's going to work off the screen, find Emma, her twin. Everyone has, when they catch the ball, they've got to look at the basket. And this is a team searching for their new point guard by committee. Vasilero, Walker, the Henry twins, Frankie. And that goes over the backboard, so a dead ball rebound to the Mervs. Long skip to Tong. Yes. That's that transition defense we talked about. Well, that was a case of transition uh, offense. Well, transition defense for the Stars. Non-transition defense, we should say. <laughs> well, or lack thereof. Right. Nai Tuong, also a volleyball athlete at Dowling Catholic. Oh. Yikes. No room for scariness, honey. Kawicki what, didn't see the pass coming, and Caitlin Clark brings another one home. Caitlin Clark up to 23 points. Holy Angels calls timeout, 10.49 left. The Mervs up by 19 over the number two team in Class 3A. <laughs> Abe is not getting tired of this. We'll remember this if Holy Angels wins the state title. But again, in this is a good primer for Holy Angels. You know, other schools might start with a lower level opponent. You know, Alexis right. Ray Lawson, as you know, she's not afraid to schedule some top tier. Had Hopkins in Centennial last year. Right. You've got Holy Angels again. Maranatha, you brought back that series. I was right. there when Andrea put down 49. Or 46, I should say, in that. <laughs> Well, you weren't there yet, I don't think, but that's when uh, Como Maranatha played and Maranatha scored 100. Andrea had 46 points. Wow, no. But, you know, Holy Angels, you know, they're playing Dowling. They're going to play both of the Bloomington teams this year, Jefferson and Kennedy, continuing that rivalry. You've got Richfield. That's an annual series with both schools located in that city. Uh, but some of the non-conference votes, Hutchinson, Orno, the defending 3A champions. Vasilero almost lost it there. And just the passing, they got to clean up the passing, and I believe they will do that eventually, yes. but that's the story of this game. Vanderwerf missed the three-pointer, and over the back foul. Good call. On Grace Gaber. Holy oh. Angels had position. So now it's a one and one. No, oh, maybe not. One more foul. And Dowling Catholic out of fouls to give. Oh. That was a sloppy possession from the get go. And Caitlin Clark. Oh, well. Back off this time, goes high-low to McVeigh. She's in trouble. Vasilero with a steal. Nice steal. 
Elbow J is short. Gets Got her own rebound. rebound. Yeah. Having a rough night in terms of field goal percentage. Caitlin Clark showing a little behind the back flare. Will take it all the way. Can't get the bounce. Well, I guess she can't make everything. It seems that way, though, if you're Holy Angels tonight. Emma Henry flips it. Now fires for mid-range. Can't get the bounce. And they're getting shots off. Holy Angels, they're getting shots off, and they're getting decent shots off. Just not falling for them. They have to capitalize off those shots. And some other non-conference highlights for Holy Angels. They will have the back end of their home and home series with Minnehaha and Maranatha, two of the top 10 teams in 2A. And as we've stated, they're in the Tri-Metro at De La Salle, the number one team in 3A. That conference series, a lot of times conference play, you know, maybe not the most compelling part of the season, but this could, nice be, this could be a year mm -hmm. where that conference rivalry could mean something. This is going to be a great year for girls basketball. Well, um, what isn't a great year? <laughs> we we find, usually find a good share of stories. but And I think there's a class of 2020 and 2021 uh, players who are going to give us a lot of highlights. Ooh. Dowling Catholic with the arrow. But a lot of times, you know, conference play, well, you know in the St. Paul City Conference, you pretty much destroyed everybody. Say it again. You pretty much destroyed everybody. One more time, Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't bury yourself in the park. St. <laughs> Paul City Conference, uh, Minneapolis, you know, South controlled that one. The late conference, Hopkins seems to win every year, although they right. had that rivalry with Minnetonka a couple years ago. But a lot of times, you know, there's a gap between the top team and the teams below them. In the Tri-Metro, you know, those top two teams, there may not be much separation, if any. And there are different sections. Could you imagine a 3A championship with De La Salle and Holy Angels? That would be nice. Not that you would not that you would complain if Como Park got in there, but not at all. Uh, and on the flip side of it, Dowling is passing the ball very well. Stronger passing, and again, it really the turnovers. You, know, mm -hmm. you got to give them credit for eating up those sloppy passes on the part of Holy Angels. And even though both teams have been in a shooting rut as of late. You know, Crashing getting, the boards, going on the chances. And as much as we've talked about Holy Angels and their struggles tonight at the passing game, you know these are things you wouldn't learn if you were to schedule some lesser competition. Right. Holy Angels isn't going to do that. They play Rochester Lord tomorrow, so they'll go up against Usby and Winter Bergner. You know, there are some matchups where they have to honor, you know, Jefferson Kennedy. They've done that for years. Right. Richfield. That's a foul on Tal Uber. Stars first with foul on Riley Dalber. Fourth. Team's third. What a game for Dowling, though. They're up by 19, and it looks like they're going to steal at least one win from a Minnesota team. That seems to be where we're headed tonight. Body language says a lot. Um, and our the, the young ladies from Holy Angels don't look too confident right now. And Caitlin Clark not on the floor right now and Holy Angels still unable to take advantage of it. Entry pass to Oberg, but she was double teamed. Steal by Wanick. Another, oh, and a Way transition miss, but a foul. Shot. You know, everyone is jogging back down. Hustle back down. Personal foul on number 30, Riley Talber, her fifth personal foul. And Riley Talber fouls out. She did not score tonight. 
but I'm sure she'll be scoring a, a lot more in future games. Make some adjustments. And remember, you know, this is a team that had to contend with a lot in terms of the athletic schedule. You don't have your head coach there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you still know the system, you still know the plays, but you don't have you know, Dan Woods there to keep you focused, but they'll have him tomorrow. And Caitlin Moses drains the elbow J. Holy Angels has scored a total of four points in this half. And That's just Caitlin not going to cut it when you're trying to decrease a lead as large as Dowling has. Got to put the ball in the basket. And they started off with the upper hand. You know, some folks may watch this game and wonder, well, what the heck is going on with Holy Angels? I would say um, I wouldn't be too concerned after one game. <laughs> it's that funny aim. <laughs> Ken the funny thing is Kennedy is a 4A team now, so they don't have to play Holy Angels anymore. At least in section play. Nice take to the basket. Moses couldn't finish. Well, let's see if Holy Angels, let's see if they can get some things going. Even if they don't win this game, you want to get some momentum psychologically, get a few baskets to fall. Mastery missing the three, Oberg. Short underneath. Went with a fadeaway there. That usually works for her. Clark steps up. Oberg with the The rim rebound. has been sealed shut the last few minutes. Neither team able to get much going. Well, Alex Walker finally ends the scoring drop for Holy Angels. Won't be enough time. I think Clark, they're going to need around. to see. Yes. See more of that from Alex Walker. And there will be more opportunities for that. Again, they are searching for a point guard kind of by committee. Holy Angels calls timeout. 54-33 our score. Holy Angels calling a full timeout. And if they had a shooter, that would take a little bit of the, make team second guess about doubling uh, Destiny so much. So right. for the first few weeks, it's gonna be a committee search for the new point guard. And you know, it's Joe Berg in his notes telling me we only had seven practices so far, dot, dot, dot. So he, he was cognizant of the difficulties tonight. Uh, but speaking of the multi-sport connections, on that volleyball team, Megan Meyer and Kaylee Vanderwerf, both members, they finished third this year, reaching the semifinal round in Class 2A. We'll see how the season unfolds, but with what's happening tonight, reminiscent of last year, Goodhue and Mountain Iron Buell met in the tip-off classic. MIB destroyed Goodhue, won that one by 40 points. In the Class A state tournament, Goodhue ran away with it. It was a 66-point swing between the two meetings. Ooh, oh, collision. look out. Walker and Vanderwerf collide. They're okay, but Anna Wanek's going to put that one in. A microcosm of the night for Holy Angels. And another turnover. Caitlin Clark left alone. Missed the three. You can tell Holy Angels maybe you're looking a little fatigued. Vasilero. Can't put that one in. And it's tough when shots aren't falling as you're wondering what do we got to do, but you're going to go through those stretches. Right. Yeah. 
Walker lines it up. Almost. No. Rebounded by Destiny Oberg. And she was fouled going back up. I think Holy Angels are going to be happy uh, to get another opponent tomorrow <laughs> and a chance to regroup. Well, how many times have you seen it on opening day? You get some surprising result or an early season game where you get a team like Holy Angels, one of the perennials now in 3A, looking out of sorts like this later in the year. They look flawless. Right. And yeah, Orno, you know, losing a lot from last year's state tournament team, but who would have thought Coa Park would run away with it? Right. Well, I did. Of course you did. <laughs> but, you know, to the outsiders, Noah Elena Jones, your, your big post player, she had 32 and 16 and then went over Cromwell right a year ago. Right. Timeout, Kristen Meyer and Dowling Catholic. What, four minutes and four seconds left on the clock? 30 seconds time. And, well, we'll we won't know how Dowling Catholic does, you know, per se, in Iowa, because we're up here, but there is a lot of good talent. I know we talk a lot about the great Minnesota teams, but it's nice to see some of these out-of-state schools pay a visit and showcase what makes them strong contenders. You know, Madison East, they're going to host another Minnesota school Absolutely. in Minnehaha in January. Well, that'll be a nice matchup. So, but it's Minnehaha making the trip, and I may have to follow. And Hopkins and the Lake Conference as a whole, they had trouble filling their schedule last year, so they started at home and home with a pair of South Dakota teams. Oberg gets the rebound there. Another Aaron pass. Holy Angels, I think they're going to want to forget this game. And that's not a knock on them. It's just it's one of those nights. One of where, those nights. Well, even the Lynx have those games where nothing gets going. You know, they won the title last year, but they got crushed by Chicago on their one of their trips out there. In a game that would seem surprising now, in retrospect, but mm -hmm. you know what happens. Even UConn loses once in a while. Just once in a while. <laughs> once every five years. And it usually takes over time to do it, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, even Hopkins. You know, as Once much as we talked about. Well, but the last couple of years, they've come oh so close to winning. They could have had a three-peat. Minnetonka edged them out a couple years ago. Last year was Elk River. As Alex Walker goes right. to the line. I think she's going to be key for this team this year, Alex Walker. She has a nice finish at the basket. She handles the ball well. And we saw how difficult it was for Holy Angels to repeat. And I think Alex Walker does have potential. Again, you know, not a primary figure of this team. So right. you have to but grapple with that. Needed at that point guard position. It, right, when you're trying to replace the most valuable position on the team, kind right. of like quarterback in football. But... Holberg. With the steal. Playing cornerback for a minute. Twong with the deflection. Well, though, anytime you steal a pass like that, it's like you're hanging out in the secondary, just <laughs> waiting to. And she makes it very it. clear when she wants the ball. Kawicki, another fadeaway. Cannot get the bounce. And that's something I think Holy Angels will work on. You've seen a couple of fadeaways, and that's not to say they can't make them, but most I, coaches want to see their players and attack. I think as the season progresses, Kowecki, number 34, will give them some good minutes off the bench. She's young. I think she's a freshman. Well, she's giving them a steal right now. Vanderwerf trailing. Well, and that gives them something to hang their heads on, hang their hats on, if you will. Stat padding time here. Dowling will 
start the season with the win. Holy Angels will have to regroup for Rochester Lord tomorrow. And it'll be another 9 o'clock game. And that's something they won't have to worry about too much uh, after this weekend. I will be watching my daughter play tomorrow morning. Where's uh, Roseville they, playing? They are having scrimmages. Uh, oh, okay, a scrimmage. Yep. So they start next week? Yep, they play on Tuesday. And I think they play Osseo at home on Tuesday. Well, and provided you're still in one piece or can put up with me, uh, we'll be seeing you next Friday for Unity yes. in the Community Day, Como yeah. and North. Uh, and from what you saw today, I think uh, North's going to have a handful compared to last yes. year. It will not be the same, I can tell you that. Yes, they play uh, Osseo, their first home game, and then Thursday they play Elk River, Roseville versus Elk River, both home games. Oberg with the finish down low. That puts her up to 17. And Dowling throws it away. We haven't seen many of those tonight. No, although Dowling's sending in their deep players now. So Twong is in there. Allie Hittner, number 33. Number 13, Nate Simplot. And number three, Brianna Rodriguez. Number 33, Allie Hittner. And Maddie Allen, number 25, all on the floor for Dowling Catholic. And Oberg will head back to the bench. Emma Mastre, Emma Mastre will go back in. Just a couple minutes to go now. Well, I gotta say, Whoever Dowling Catholic has to play in Iowa, uh, the opponents are not going to have an easy time with the Mervs. Reached the state tournament in Iowa last year. They play very well Allie together. Hittner. Allie Hittner gets a basket. Mastre for three. Off the heel, Twong with the rebound. Way to hold on to the ball. The last 40 seconds of the game. Hittner scoring back-to-back -back buckets. Three from the corner. Does not fall. And for Holy Angels, uh, this is just a rough second half. But give credit to the Dowling Catholic defense. Got Holy Angels out of their psyche, and they took it. They take a big lead. They got a big lead in the first half, held on to it. Fine performance by the Mervs. They went 62-41. And for Holy Angels, uh, they've got some work to do for Dowling Catholic. A fine performance in their first of two games in the North Star State. And you're out of words. You're speechless, apparently, in this performance. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> I think it's past all of our bedtimes here. We'll try to get a quick word, though, with some of the Dowling Catholic players before we wrap things up here and see what they have to say. You're watching high school girls basketball, the St. Thomas Thanksgiving tip-off. Dowling Catholic wins 62-41. Look forward to seeing you back And I'm joined by Caitlin Clark of the Dowling Catholic Mervs. Uh, that was an interesting nickname, uh, but your play today was just outstanding. You know, 25 points and that pressure defense really got to Holy Angels. Uh, what was your mindset? Because you don't get to scout Minnesota teams per se, so how did you go in and how successful was your game plan? Yeah, well, our coach got some film from last year, so we knew that they ran a lot of high-low stuff, so we sounded that well. And we knew we would need a lot of backside help. So I thought we did that well. We started off a little rough on defense, but then we turned our press on and that got led to easy buckets. So I think that helped a lot to the game. 
And you just dominated throughout. Second half was a little sluggish, both teams having trouble finding the basket. But tell me, what makes that transition game so effective for Dallin Catholic? Um, I think we just have a lot of people that are quick with their hands. And once somebody gets a steal, somebody else gets out and runs, and it's just an easy layup. And we're all just passing to each other, and it works good. How exciting is it for you and this team to make the trip up here, You know, play against a couple of Minnesota teams? You know, yeah. What does it mean for you guys to yeah. make a weekend trip out of uh, this? No, we were all really excited. I mean, Minnesota basketball is super good. So we were just, you guys play four more minutes of basketball than us, than we do in Iowa. So free basketball, I guess. So we were excited about that part. And we're just happy to be here. So, yeah. And get to that part uh -huh. because, you know, as you said, 18 minute halves, yeah. everywhere else, four minute quarters. Uh -huh. And it looked like uh, you guys could handle 36-minute no, yeah. basketball. How do those extra four minutes, did that show up at all, or how do you prepare for that? I mean, we did condition a lot over the summer and, like, through off season, so I think that helped a lot, and we do condition and practice. But, I mean, I think we were off fine out there, but, I mean, it was just a good time. I like playing extra basketball, so. I see uh, one of your USA oh, teammates, yeah. so it, Paige Becker's uh, paying a visit. So uh -huh. tell me about that experience, being with the U16 national team and uh – -huh. How did that develop you as a player, and how is that going to help this Dowling Catholic team throughout yeah. the year? Um, I learned a lot about leadership, so I think that was the biggest part of it all. And just took that away from the experience, and I mean, everybody was just so good there. I mean, we were just a good team, and chemistry is really important, so I think that would, is what I learned most at being on Team USA. And pretty much every USA team is good, but for you, just how cool was that to oh. get that invitation? Oh, it was crazy. I mean, at first I didn't really know what it was. And my, my dad and my coach kind of... only USA me. basketball. <laughs> I, know, I know. And then I went out and tried out and made the team. And it's just, it was unbelievable. It was an amazing experience. And uh, so obviously you have another team tomorrow. And then mm -hmm. you go back to Iowa and play against uh, your in-state foes. So yeah. what goals do you have? What's ahead for you? And you know, what do you hope mm -hmm. to accomplish this year? Well, we want to win a state championship, obviously, but um, just taking it practice at a time. I think that's what Coach Meyer tells us every day, single day, that every practice is important, so we got to bring it every single day. And you're just a sophomore, if yeah, I recall, so a <laughs> little time before you think about no, college, yeah, but no uh, uh -huh. uh, just what individually, what would you like to accomplish this year? I would just do whatever it takes to get my team a state championship, I would say. Whatever that is, I'll take, do that for the team. And you got to the quarterfinals a yeah, year ago, so... Very good, but we'll get back this year. So well, now that you're with USA Ball, I think uh, you've got a taste for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'll have to see how that plays yeah. out. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. well, we'll just have to watch because uh, you're down in Iowa, we're yeah. up here. But you know, glad you could make the trip. Yeah, and yeah, uh, that's awesome. and uh, oh yes, absolutely. It's uh, I was here in the old incarnation, and uh -huh. this is a huge they, upgrade. They, uh, but uh, I want to ask: Is there anyone you want to say hi to? Um, my mom's probably watching, so her, my brothers, that's all I would say. I'm sure all the fans in Iowa, uh, who knows, maybe you'll end up playing for the Hawkeyes someday. Maybe, maybe, you're right. Or Iowa State, yeah. I suppose, yeah, you've got a lot of options down there. Yeah. Up here, you only got one. Minnesota, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, but that being said, I'm sure you'll take whatever offers come your way, and I think you'll get plenty with the experience you have. Congrats on the win, and uh, even though we won't be able to follow you as mm -hmm. you go to your journey progresses, I certainly wish you much success Thank and you. hopefully a state championship yeah, comes your way. Right. That's, that's our plan, so All hopefully right. we get it done. Caitlin Clark of Dowling Catholic. That wraps up our coverage here from St. Thomas. For our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.